Hey everybody, this is Harrison with Level 1 Gaming coming to you with the new FNAF Into the Pit game. For starters, I haven't been the biggest FNAF fan in the past. I think I played the third one was the last one that I played, and I've not really kept up with the series since then. However, I was very much looking forward to this game due to the new style and the new gameplay and just the great looking pixel art in it. And I had not read the book that this game is based on, so I came into it with pretty fresh eyes. And for it being based off a book, I can give the game credit because the story is excellent, it's paced really well, and you can really tell that a lot of the care and the effort was put in this story. The gist is that you're obviously a kid, you go to Freddy's, you find some mystical ball pit, transporting you back in time like a Stargate, but shenanigans ensue when Freddy possesses your dad and travels back to the Stargate, back to your world, and you're the only one who notices. The gameplay here is much like a classic point-and-click adventure game. So the gameplay mainly consists of walking, finding items to use to combine in certain places, and hiding from monsters. There are some mini-games hidden throughout the levels, and if you're hiding from a monster and it's about to see you while you're hiding, you'll have to do a mini-game or a quick time event to swat away spiders or to stop something from falling over so the monsters don't find you. There are some fun arcade cabinets or mini-games you can find, but those are not integral to the story. So besides the story, I think the strongest aspect of this game is the audio. It is extremely well done. Just the, I hate using this word, but vibe. When you just look at the game and get into it, just the horrible sounds have been so beautifully, meticulously designed to make you know and you feel that you're in this world. And they're so crunchy, they're so horrible, and they're just put through just the right filters to make it sound so immersive to be in this world. But unfortunately, that's where most of my praise for this title stops. Um, this is one of those games that in the first five, ten minutes of the game, you're going to have experienced pretty much all the gameplay that this game is ever going to throw at you. And that's very disappointing. And I'm trying for this not to be a critique of the genre, um, because I think it'd be really easy to do that. But the situations you're presented with gameplay-wise never move past oh, you walked in this room, this thing needs a screwdriver, go find the screwdriver. And you go plodding back the way you came to try to find it while you're dodging the monsters and try not to make enough noise. And the first couple times that is engaging, but because you're constantly going through the same few areas over and over and over again, that gets old pretty quickly. And that's not to say that I'm trying to critique the fact that there are so few areas because the so few areas are so well designed they look great they sound great all the story scenes that take place in them are well done it's just that if you're going through your house on the third or second day by that point you've already walked through your house multiple times doing different things and not a whole lot changes enough of it does to keep it semi-fresh but for me the gameplay felt rather repetitive and rather still pretty quickly and i think the biggest sin that this game could commit is that i didn't find it scary at all absolutely whatsoever and i remember being absolutely terrified of the original games and i don't know if that here is just to the fact that i was so bored with the gameplay that i didn't find the game scary because the game really does its best and especially in terms of audio of just making you horrified of everything that's happening. And the sounds here are really, truly scarier than anything that you'll see or that will happen to you from a jump scare. Some other qualms I had with it was that the button to run didn't work a solid 20% of the time, causing me some game overs. And the game overs in this game are not that fun. So if you're starting on day one and you're trying to figure out a way to get out of your house, that's where the checkpoint is. So you could go through the entire house collecting all these old things, you're ready to go, but you get seen right as you're trying to escape. Well, you're reset back at the beginning of that day and have to go find all those things over again, even if you know how to get out. And I understand that there's a lot of games like that, but in this game, it's more tedious because you're like, okay, I've walked this area six or seven times already. And it just got repetitive to me really quickly. The AI also a couple times would come into a room, so I would hide, then they would leave the room, and as soon as I was about to get out, they would come back in the room and stand there for a couple minutes, and then leave, then come back in. I reset the game once when that happened. This only happened a couple times, but it is something that if you play this and get stuck in that loop, just go ahead and restart from the checkpoint if you're able to, because they can get stuck in that. Something else that I think is fun here is that there are 
um, quite a few endings. And you can get one of the endings 20 minutes into the game. Not even 20 minutes, probably like 10 minutes into the game. And it's such a beautiful ending. I hope that's the canonical ending because that's the one I accidentally got, not even realizing. And I was like, heck yeah, I'm so glad that exists in here. Good job developers for putting this in. So I hope everybody finds that ending because it's a lot of fun. So there is some replay value to be found here, but myself, I only got two of the endings and I can't see myself playing longer to get more of the endings. So overall, if you're a FNAF fan and you've read the book that it was based on and enjoyed that, you'll probably enjoy seeing the story carried out in a game like this. But if not, you'll find a rather plotting but beautifully designed and sounding side scroller. Um, I just wish that this was a game that I could say I would recommend to anybody regardless if you're a FNAF fan or not. But this is a game that I think is only appealing and is only for the diehard FNAF fans. And that was kind of a quick review, but this game was a little short, so I feel like it was warranted here. But again, I'm Harrison with Level 1 Gaming. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.